Hi, my name is Tom Thomas. Today we're going to show how to replace some posts that were part of a post barn uh, that had been rotted. So if you look at the posts here, you can see right here at ground level what has happened. We had gotten this place a few years ago. You can see that uh, somebody had tried to re support it with a two by four, which actually probably made the matters worse. You can see the rot that had taken place here. I need to replace five of the two for this video. This one, you can really see the rot down here. And usually the rot starts right at the surface area. So we're in the lower Columbia River Valley. Uh, gets lots of rain. Um, then it dries out, so this wet and dry, wet and dry continually wears on it, especially at the ground level. Once that exterior uh, barrier gets broken, then the insects have a heyday at it. Point, I'm going to run a uh, chalk line straight across there and see what uh, needs to be done with the bows to make that straight. So we got the bracing up on this post here. You can see that it's it's secured at the bottom with some pretty big uh, four by six and some four by fours and then so i had to jack this one up about six inches going over to the other one this one i still have the uh bottle jack in there Get a little better angle it's not secure enough to work on yet uh, I chalked the line on the fish and everything uh, looks uh, within an eighth of an inch. So, you got to uh, put some 4x4s under the sides here and then that'll be, that'll be safe enough to start working on. Alright, but it's getting late. And we'll finish it tomorrow. So we got uh, the braces up on both of these poles. You can see uh, it's kind of a repeat. But you see it's coming across, spanning the uh, rafter pair that are right there. And so uh, it's pretty, you need it straight up and down and pretty secure. So that looks pretty good. And then the other one is the same way, goes on up. So, and it's, it's not wiggling here at all. So, as you can see down here, this pole lifted clean out of that hole there. So the next thing is how high up does this rot go? Going over here, uh, pulled up, but the rot doesn't look as bad as it came up as far. So the only way you can do it, we tapped it with a hammer to see if it was hollow or not. So now we'll just uh, tap it with a hammer. As you can hear down here, it isn't it seems a little more solid, but that uh, seems kind of hollow there. So I can bring that up, the concrete up, maybe eight inches from ground level. So the only way to get in there is saw it off and uh, look, feel up or look up inside. So we saw it off the bottom and uh, used, I used a circular saw and then a hand saw. And you can see it's still, we want to even that up on the other side. But you can see that uh, the rod did not go um, up into the post that bad. In fact, that's really good. You can see, you can see right here this crack. This is just the start of where moisture insects could start to get up in there. So we dug down about 16 inches. You can see we uh, got out, oops, oh, we got out a lot of rotted posts, but you can see the this is kind of a mix of sand and clay, which is uh, 
indicative of the soil here. So um, having a square foot footing is really why I like to dig this hole at least uh, maybe 16 inches across. Okay, elapsed time is probably a couple hours. But if you look down in the hole, well, let me stand over there. First thing I saw with these blue plastic or rubber uh, mat things, those were directly uh, under the pole. And then under those, you can see down in there, is a, looks like a six by six um, uh, concrete. Because the clay and sand soil, it looks like the original builder used piles to support the posts. We are going to go ahead and use those piles instead of putting in a footing because they haven't moved in 25 years. We got these here, these bolt in, and then they do a wet set. So um, these are actually really nice. They are really robust. They will lift the post up on the concrete. Uh, so there will be no rotting or anything there. All right, so we got uh, one bolt here in that bracket. That'll hold it in place. It's tight on this end. There was a little gap on the other end, so uh, that'll hold it in place. We'll put in the concrete up to this level. All right, so we are ready to pour. I had to cut um, about a foot and a half off of that um, form. You can see it's raised a little bit higher. I'm going to put a little slope on it. I have the water always running down. All right. Here we have post number one done. Just got to hit the concrete to cure. Uh, we got to slope down away from the bracket. And uh, we had to notch the um, uh, six by six there because that bracket wouldn't uh, quite fit. So here we have the uh, finished product. We've got uh, cardboard removed from the form near the top, back filled with the dirt we took out. Uh, we've got the brackets. We took some uh, construction adhesive. Uh, sealing some of the uh, cracks so moisture won't get into the center of the wood and rot. Uh, uh, here's the second post again. This one was a little uh, higher up. So we had uh, the rotten went up a little bit more. And uh, that was mainly because we had a hole here. There was used amount of gate. And as well as down there. And uh, when they took out those uh, gate screws, they never filled it in. So that was a source of uh, moisture getting in the center of the wood. And last, this was a different bracket. Uh, we had to um, do the wet pour and then bolt this bracket on there. And as you can see as you go up, um, we didn't do a true scarf on this one. It was proven to be uh, really uh, difficult. Uh, so we're going to, uh, well, we glued it with a, a construction adhesive, let it uh, sit down on it. Then we uh, will uh, put some brackets on that. And uh, 